Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Hi, it's Michael Savage. I'm not abandoning you in your time of need. As America is being infiltrated and overrun, Michael Savage sits here, sort of a vigil on the hill, watching the nightmare unfold while Fang is surfing in Hawaii, having slammed open the borders, pillaged the treasury, debased every institution in America, including the military. There are those of us who see what is going on and refuse to capitulate to the enemy. I have a question for you. Why is Trump's lead growing larger and larger, despite him attacking Muslim immigrants? And number two, if Hillary represents women's rights, why is she silent while girls are being raped in the Middle East by Muslims? Yazidi women, Christian women, ripped out of their mother's arms. Go and look at the videotape. I have it up from the Daily Mail on michaelsavage.com. It is one of the most heart-rendering tapes I've ever seen in my life. Yazidi girls screaming as they're torn away from their mothers and fathers in a schoolyard by these untermenschen, these subhumans, these subhumans who make Hitler's minions look like Boy Scouts, and we're doing nothing about it, virtually nothing about it. Fang is in Hawaii saying nothing about these rapes. Hillary the liar who represents women like my dog represents women. How could she say she represents women when she's saying nothing about ongoing rape and kidnapping, Barbara Streisand? Barbara, hey, big mouth, hey, funny girl, who loves all things liberal. Somalia cancels Christmas because it threatens Islamic culture. You hear this? Any country where there is a Muslim majority, there is persecution of other religions. Now, right now, the Muslims are in a minority in America, but they're moving up. Do you know what happened in this country right after the Muslim massacre in San Bernardino? The Muslim group, I forget the name of this one, one of the uh, front groups, a U.S. Muslim group announced a campaign to not root out and seek out jihadis in America, but to fight Islamophobia after the slaughter. They're very clever, haven't they? They learned the game in America. They learned it from Jesse Jackson. They learned it from Al Sharpton. They learned it from Black Lives Matter. They learned to keep getting in the face of America no matter what happens. Never admit that you're wrong. Never admit that you're part of the problem. Always attack, attack, attack. And that explains why Trump is going up, up, up. He's the only one on the political stage that's saying one word about the dangers of Islam. Now, I'm not going to spend all day talking about this, but I'm going to spend a few more minutes on it, if you don't mind. I know many of you are in Christmas mode, and you'd rather hear some lighter stuff, and you will, maybe, maybe not. You know, I am doing a Teddy book, my dog Teddy. It's coming out in May. It'll be totally different than anything I've ever published. Mainly pictures of this little guy and me, me feeding him, and this and that, bicycling, all sorts of happy stuff. But I've written it so that it... I hope it becomes a classic, not just a little, you know, hallmark dog book. I try to put some duende in it, some soul, some me, some humanity. And in it, I mention in passing that a neighbor says you can judge a man by how he treats dogs. And I conclude the opening to that book with a little statement about how Muslims treat dogs. And he said, you're kidding. I didn't know that. I said, you didn't know that Islam and dogs are not co uh, cooperative or, or shall I say, Compatible. No, he said, I didn't know that. I said, you know that Muslims hate dogs? He said, come on. So I put together for you a little list of things about how Muslims treat dogs. You forgot the case back in uh, Minneapolis in 97 to start with when a Somali cab driver kicked a blind person out with a seeing eye dog screaming, no dog, no dog, get out, get out. Threw the blind woman out of the cab. And to this, the Council on American Islamic Relations, which many consider to be the Muslim Mafia, according to a book that was put out, 
CAIR replied by pointing out that the saliva of dogs invalidates the ritual purity needed for prayer. Close quote. There are many other cases. I have them in my hand. How about how Muslims treat women? You think that they like women? You think they treat women as equals? First of all, they put them in medi medieval tents. What man would put his wife in a tent that covers every part of her body who respects women? They treat them worse than they do a camel. Now, when I say to you there's a clash of civilizations and that war is coming, you could say I'm crazy, but if you open your eyes, you realize the war is here. And only a, a, a lunatic, a psychotic who hates the country, would bring in millions of men of military age from Syria into this country at a time like this. This is the same insanity that you would see if it was 1939 after Hitler had invaded surrounding nations and that if a president got up and said, in order to be nice to the growing German threat, we're going to bring in more Germans and learn how to live with them because we need to get to know the good Germans. And you say to them, wait a minute, if you're bringing in millions of Germans, how do you know which ones of them are members of the Nazi party? We don't care. We'll vet them. How can you vet them when they have fake passports? Well, don't tell us about that. We need them to come in to vote for a Democrat. This is what's going on. In other words, this entire administration is committing treason and sedition in plain English. But we're not living in sane times, are we? We're living in insane times where the doxies of the left, the religious doxies of liberalism, are trumping, sorry to use the word, sanity and reality. Sanity and reality are being trumped by the stupidity of the left. That's the opening to the show. Now, I spent all morning, I had a good time this morning. I was talking for over two hours to my friend in Hollywood, Robert Davi, who is an actor who's been in 200 movies. You may recognize him, you may not. I love him, he's a friend, great guy. I don't see him but every few months. But he and I, when we start to talk, I don't know what it is. We have, I don't know what it is, we pollinate in ideas. We're working on a, on a uh, um, I can't tell you anything about it other than we have a script that we're working on together, which will be a movie and a novel that we're working on together, which will be a novel first. It's going to be an amazing movie. It has something to do with what I just said to you. Uh, that's all I can say about it. It's about America as it should be. And the only way to get America back to how it can be, that's what this movie and novel will be about. But that's a year away from now. But I love that conversation. We couldn't stop calling each other back with additional ideas for the movie. Over, I would call him. I said, I got to go. I got a movie. I got a show to do. Robert, I got to get off the phone. Then I'm stuffing my face with a bagel of talking with him. And he's giving me ideas. He's hammering me. And I said, oh, my God, that's amazing. Let me add to the scene with this. I said, I got to go. Stop it. I got I got a show to do in 20 minutes. Stop it. He said, no, no, one more thing. I said, no, stop. This went on for three hours. He and I can't stop. You ever get into those states of creativity with someone? It's unbelievable. He and I are some, some uh, team. So I did have a wonderful morning. And then I have to, you know, do your show, your show, my show and talk about the realities of what we're living through here, it makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. But, of course, it makes sense why Trump is rising. Trump is rising because he's the only one ever talked about the threat that Muslim immigration poses to our society. And yet Hillary Clinton, the demagogue liar, says anybody who says one word about the threat that Muslim immigration poses to our society is a homo is a, an Islamophobe, this thisophobe, thatophobe, why is the gay community silent on this? This is something that perplexes me. How are gays treated in fundamentalist Muslim societies? Why is the gay community dumb and silent on this? Why is the female of our species silent on this when women are treated worse than garbage? Why? How does Hillary get away with silence on this? I ask myself these questions and for which there is no answer. None. Instead, she attacks Trump. Instead of attacking those who are raping girls in the Middle East, she attacks Trump. Here is Hillary Clinton, Miss Pantsuit, in clip two. Listen. I really do think we need more love and kindness in our country. I think we are not treating each other with the respect and the, and, and the care that we should show toward each other. Oh, and shut up. Is there more, Robert, or you cut her off? Oh, you cut her off. Even Robert couldn't take it. She's known as a caring, loving woman, isn't she? She's known as a caring, loving woman. You know, every time you look at Hillary Clinton, you can feel love pouring over her 
out of her. She's known for love. Uh, you got to play the rest of it, Robert, with the bully part. I'm sorry I cut you off by screaming. Could you just pick it up a little bit and run it again? It's okay. Our, uh, and eight, why five, we five. shouldn't let anybody bully his way into the presidency. Um, because bully. that is not who we are, who are as you? Americans. You would know what we are as Americans. Vince Foster knows who we are as Americans. The chain of women that uh, your husband abused know what we are as Americans. I love it. You shouldn't let anyone bully their way into the presidency. And what are you doing? You're not bullying your way into the presidency? You annihilated anyone in the Democrat Party who might have stood in your way. You crushed them like a bug. People far better than you were crushed, Hillary. So you could finally have what you think you're going to have, but you're not going to have it. I believe Trump will be our next president. I believe every poll is supporting that. I believe that even minority communities love Trump. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I've analyzed this for a long time when I come back right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. It's Captain Savage. We have attained cruising altitude. You can take off your seat belts, have a drink, walk around, have a smoke. See, this airplane is safer than most because it's not a real airplane. It's an airplane in your mind. It's an airplane that takes you to an America that doesn't exist anymore, but an America that just might exist again. Uh, with me in the crew quarters are Robert on the board and Clint on the calls. Teddy, of course, is the mascot, fast asleep at my feet. I'll be with you for the next couple of hours. And the phone number is 855-407-282. And when we broke, I said, <clears throat> why... Trump is popular even amongst minorities. And I'm going to get to that in a second, but I want to diverge again back to something. I posted the Daily Mail article from a week ago of ISIS vermin taking young girls to rape them away from their mothers and fathers as the mothers and fathers and the girls are screaming. You can't even listen to the screams. People are not believing this is real. Someone smuggled this out from one of the ISIS strongholds. They're dragging these young girls away. The girl, one of them escaped and tells what happened to her. They then shot their fathers. We know where they are and we don't kill them. That fraud of a president of ours dashes off to go surfing in Hawaii and lets this go on. Makes believe he's a champion of the downtrodden. And Hillary, that harridan, says nothing about this. Making believe she's a champion of women. And that comes right to why Trump is popular, even amongst constituents that or constituencies that you would not think would support him. Even in, amongst African Americans, there's a huge support for Trump, and I will tell you why. The African American community, in my opinion, has been lied to so often and for so long that even if they disagree with the man's policies to a certain extent, they'd rather have a, a truth teller than a liar. They know Hillary's a liar through and through. They know what they're going to get with her. They don't like her. So they like Trump, they like strength, and they like truth. They don't care even if his policies disagree with theirs. At least they know he'll tell it like it is. That's number one. Why are Hispanics, so many Hispanics, in favor of Trump? I'll tell you why. You have to understand, you want to call it the Latino culture. You can't, even though that's not the proper word. We'll use it for the sake of identity. The Latino culture is a male-oriented culture. It's extremely macho. Do I have to say any more? Is there a more alpha macho candidate than Donald Trump? He appeals to the Latino male because he is macho. They like strength. They like leadership. They want a man running America, not a deceptive liar. They don't want a snake running America like Obama. They see what the snake is. They know the snake has done nothing for the Latino community except threaten the Latino community by flooding America with millions of undocumented aliens who threaten who the most. Who do these undocumented Hispanics uh, threaten the most? The Hispanics who are already here, many of whom are on the bottom of the social ladder. And who is being hurt more by the illegal aliens from south of the border uh, than anyone? The African-American community. The social welfare funds that should be going to the poorest of the poor is being diverted to illegal aliens from third world nations. They know what's going on, and they know that Trump will actually be good for them financially as well as every other way. That's my analysis. You can take that to the bank. I'm Michael Savage. You can take that to the bank because it's the best analysis of why minorities like Trump and why he's going to win. They detest.